Hey guys, this is Neon Nezi back again with another Destiny Knights video. So today we have the update notes for the Guild War patch that is coming out tomorrow on August 31st. Today is August the 30th. Um, early morning right now, like 6 a.m. Didn't really get a lot of sleep, so pardon me right now if my words don't always make sense in this video. It's just because I'm a little tired. But without further ado, guys, this content is basically bringing us 11 different things, or this patch is bringing us 11 different um, contents. So the link is in the, in the is, is, wait, hold on. The link is in the description down below. Words come back to me. Brain, wake the hell up. All right. So first off, we have the added Guild Wars. Then we have the PvP revamp. We have the Inua boss, the new... Uh, faction boss for Inua, Zaratus, Zaratus, one of those two. Um, we have Ingrid skill improvements. Did she need skill improvements? I'm not sure, but I will let Netmarble know right now. Buffs are always, always, always more welcome than nerfs. So thank you guys, because that's all you guys have been doing. Except for Elki and, um, and Jun. But seriously guys, those units were just overpowered. Then we have the TO, Tower of Promises uh, reset, TOP reset, basically. What I will say is try to, once it resets, you start off at level 1, right? Try to get to level 60 or level 80, depending on what's been released in your region, as quick as possible. Because not being at the highest level of Tower of Promises available to you is seriously hindering your ability to farm gold. All right, so get it done as quick as possible. Uh, default hero... Uh, inventory limit expansion so right now I think you start you can go up to 480 um, that's how much I have right now I have 480 units uh, this is going to go up to 600 so they're going to add in a hundred and twenty um, hero spots which is nice uh, then we have three new packages I know what's in them but I don't know how much they're going to cost so that might change um, limiting returning limited returning check-in reward increase so you know when you guys log in there's that 30 day reward where at 15 days and at 30 days you guys get a legendary uh, summoning scroll I'm guessing they're just uh, upping it I'm, I'm guessing they're just making changes to that to make it more rewarding of course I could be wrong tower on I mean tomb of prophecy Adjustments, I'm not sure what that means, but we'll find out. Then we have Ingrid, the newly skill-improved Ingrid and Shaolin summon rate increase. So they're going to be on the banners. So this week it was Carlota and Francisca. Next week, as I just mentioned, is going to be Ingrid and Shaolin. All four units are pretty good. Then we have the four-star descended dungeon schedule. So Guild War right now, um, the schedule seems to be... Tomorrow, August 31st till November 27th. That month is going to be the preseason, a month of preseason. Then the 28th, one day, is going to be uh, it's, it's, it's going to be like a daybreak for preseason result calculation. And then the 29th onward is going to be the regular season. I'm guessing whatever data and feedback they collect from the preseason, if the first season is from the is from November 29th to, to December 26th. After that, I think like in the second season, we're going to see um, feedback actually being implemented. Because right now, they're not taking any breaks. So I'm guessing they're not going to be able to implement everything that, everything that we want or like they find out there's some bugs. And they're going to be able to fix that over a day. It might take them a month or two. I'm just happy that Guild War is here. The schedule right now, um, if you guys scroll down, you guys will see there's the 0 to 20, 20 to 21, 21 to 22, 22 to 24 hours. I'm not sure what all that means. Um, right now, I don't want to make any assumptions because this is essentially telling me that it takes 20 hours to do an application. It takes an hour for you to be matched. Then you have an hour to progress like you have an hour window to progress and then you have an hour for it to calculate the calculate the results it um yeah it, it doesn't really make sense sense um so i'm not gonna 
I'm, I'm not going to say that that is what it is. Um, again, I haven't seen the patch yet. I haven't seen what it's going to bring exactly. So uh, do not take my word for it. Arena Lobby, the user interface has been changed. So that's completely understandable. They changed the match rules. Now on there is going to be no um, manual. It's, it's, it's going to be full auto. We have... Um, the score calculation has been changed. So special arena, you wouldn't lose uh, points if you lost. In common arena, you would. Now in both, if you guys lose, you will lose points. However, one thing that I'm still uncertain about is let's take an example here, all right? Easy the Gamer is defending, Neon Nezi is attacking. If Neon Nezi loses to Easy the Gamer's defense, Neon Nezi will lose points. But if Neon Nezi's offense beats Easy the Gamer's defense, does Easy the Gamer lose points? That is my question. Um, I'm not sure if it's very necessary for this to happen, but I think it would make things a little bit more interesting because then people would actually start to, to care about defense. Sure, right now, if you beat the opponent, if your defense beats the opponent, the opponent loses points, well and good. But I feel like people don't care unless it affects them. So unless there's a potential of gaining or losing points on your defense, I feel like people won't start to care enough. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, now the reset uh, or the weekly reset is a little bit different. Before, what used to happen is that you would everybody would get reset back to 1,000 points, right? Now what's going to happen is that whichever uh, tier you finished last season, you're going to drop down a tier and go to the lowest rank of that, of that league. So if you're in gold right now, right? You're going to drop to silver, and you're going to go to the lowest rank of silver, which is silver 2. I hope that explains it. Now, there's the changing in the match finding system. So, instead of this being completely random, you are now going to have a list of five opponents to choose from. You click on them, you see their defense, and then you set up your offense, and then you attack them. So, you can now choose your strategy you can be strategic on how you approach things every guild i mean every pvp encounter in arena is going to be different if you choose it to be so however what is going to happen is that the rng factor is going to make it so much more fun now and infuriating it at times because it's all an auto which i think is really really nice it's something that the game brings that's unique to the game and I just think it's really nice. I, I don't know about you guys. Sorry, I just had to drink some water there. I'm getting parched super early. Um, so defense teams can now also be organized if another opponent conducts a battle. I'm not sure what that means. But I'm guessing it just means that now, um, now your defense team and your offense team are going to be different. Because before... Whatever you were using to attack other people was immediately like your defense. We have a tactic system. Um, so if you have two units of the same element, like rock and rock, as is shown in the picture, then you get a 10% final damage increase. Three elements of the same kind, 20% final damage increase. And four, that means core three and your striker, all the same element gives you a increase of final damage by 30%. Next up, we have the tactics list. Um, again, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Right now, I can see that there's three different ways to do this. There's basic, leader first, and rear first. So it all depends on who you want to prioritize. If you want to prioritize um, everybody, kind of leave it, leave it like um, everybody just has an equal chance of using their skills then what you will want to do is put on basic that it shows here the division between the three 33 33 33 then there is the leader first which is uh the leader has high skill activation chance at 70 percent and then the other two have 15 and 15 percent 
Then we have the rear first, which the leader is only going to have 20%, but the two in the rear are each going to have 40%. So again, not sure how this is going to look. I'm just telling you guys what I see right now. Personally, I think it would... One thing that I can see being really meta is having like the rear first. So you have somebody to cleanse, somebody for immunity, and then your damage dealer as your rear, as your um, leader, but high defense or high HP kind of damage dealer and just make it like a super annoying, unkillable team. Of course, whatever I say right now might, might not be making sense to you. We're going to have to actually implement it, see how this is. It's going to be so good, guys. It's going to be so good. Like, I'm awake now. I'm awake. Um, add a type buff system. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. I just ex explained that. The more similar types you guys have, um, the more uh, increase in final damage. Tracker Hero is also included in this. Then we have the auto, uh, auto feature, which is going to... It says auto skill feature is improved to increase skill usage efficiency in arena. So it's already improved. Without the tactic system, it's already improved. With the tactic system, it should be fairly accurate to how you want your team to be reacting. I can tell you right now, crowd control teams are going to be such a pain. It's going to it's going to solely depend on what striker you have. Can the striker cleanse? Can it like provide you a shield or something? I feel like that's what it's going to come down to when countering uh, crowd control teams. Then we have increased arena rewards. Uh, reward for calm arena has been increased. Very nice, very nice. Defense team result notification. Um, so I'm guessing you guys can, you guys are going to get told when your defense wins or loses a match. Um, then we have Zaratus, the new uh, boss. There's some gameplay right there. Um, it just says the other, the only other note right now that it says is um, other faction bosses will be added subsequently via updates. I'm not sure, but right now I can I can kind of see that this boss has uh, kind of a different mechanics. It almost has like a double a double talon attack. I don't know what to call its legs, but. I think it's going to be susceptible to burn, although that doesn't make sense because Destro is weak to burn, but this guy will be able to chill you or something, so, or maybe even freeze you, so immunity might be important. Next up, we have uh, Ingrid skill improvements. For all I know, it's mostly that uh, Paper Ingrid first skill got uh the cooldowns were reduced for Dark Matter, the second skill. The breakpoint has been increased. Then for Ingrid Scissor, uh, Magnetic Field, the damage has been increased substantially. And the cooldown has been reduced. Then for um, Plan Medicate skill, the cooldown has been reduced. So we have um, Tower of Promises resets again. Um, as you clear the floor, you guys will be uh, gaining rewards. We then have what I mentioned before, um, the default hero inventory. Uh, you start off with 120, now you're going to get 240. Wherever you are right now, you're going to get plus 120. So I have 480 plus 120 is a total of 600 slots. Next, we have the three new packages. First package is called Major Update Celebration Package, which I think is going to be worth getting if you guys have the money. It's um, 8,000 rubies, two skilled dragoons, two legendary with 500,000 gold. Next one is Super Discount Package. Depends on the price on this one, all right? Um, we'll look at it into more depth tomorrow. Uh, this one will give you 5,000 rubies, one skilled dragoon, one legendary summoning scroll, two LAMs, and five superior awakening material two lms as in two legendary awakening materials then we have the top 10 packages which just seems packed it has 4000 rubies two skill dragoons two legendary summoning scrolls five 
100,000 gold, 5-star Evolved Dragoons, 4 of them, 4 LAMs, 10 Superior Awakening Materials, 20 Excellent Awakening Materials, 10 Legendary Orb Summoning Scroll, and 8 Legendary Crest Summoning Scroll. The top 10 packages might just be the next the next best package just because it has like everything in it it's it's just so condensed so limited limited player return check in reward um oh it happens every 7 days so from what i see on this day 1 you get 3500 rubies day 2 one L, one legendary scroll, day three legendary scroll, day four one million gold, day five legendary scroll, day six skill dragoon, and day seven guaranteed five star summoning scroll. So I'm not, sh- I don't want to make my assumptions on this uh, limited leader. This seems like a one in once once in an account kind of deal. So I'm not sure. Oh, oh. I know what this is. This is... Oh, my God. I'm so dumb. This is for returning players. Um, That means that players that quit the game for, like, over a month or something, and if they're going to come back... Guys, if you guys stop playing the game, come back now, because we have Guild Wars. Arena System just got a huge revamp, all right? Things are balanced now. Not to mention, if you have been playing for the past, like, I don't know how long, but if you quit the game, come back now because you guys are going to get 3,500 rubies, three legendary summoning scrolls, one million gold, one skill dragoon, and one guaranteed five-star hero summoning scroll for free within the first week. That is absolutely insane. Tomb of Prophecy adjustments. Mission achieved conditions have changed from prerequisite to cumulative type. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing what this means is that instead of it just being once, you need to do it a certain amount of times. A mission will be completed immediately if its conditions have already been met, even if the mission is still locked. So they're changing a few things. Um, before, let's say there was like um, quests A, B, C, and D. If I complete the requisites for quest C, but I haven't done quest A, I wouldn't get the rewards. Once I unlock quest C, I'd have to do quest C again. But now, it's like whenever you complete them, they're already completed. You just need to unlock them to collect the rewards, which is nice. Uh, two of Prophecies. Uh, they, there's a user I- I- interface change. Um, I'm not going to go into it right now, just, just because I feel it's going to be... User interface changes, I feel it's just best to look at it when it comes out instead of trying to explain it through words. Uh, then, of course, we have the Ingrid and Shaolin summon increase rate. Um, chance to summon 5 star heroes ha- uh, have remained the same. Oh, let me just explain um, this 5 star banner, alright guys? The chance of you summoning a 5 star is the same. However, that 5 star being one of these two units is increased 5 times. That's what the banner is for. It's not that there's a higher chance of getting a nat 5. It's that if you get a nat 5, there's a higher chance of it being one of the two on the banner. Whichever banner you clicked on. So, next up we have the Descended Dungeon Schedule. Personally, I never like to d- describe these simply because I feel it just takes way too long. You guys can go to, go to it and look at it on its own. Uh, the next two units are Luna and uh, Griffin. After that, I think we're going to get Wukong and Nirid. So, all in all, guys, this patch seems to be very promising. Very, very excited. I would highly recommend people that are playing the game to farm the past week guys i have farmed more than i have probably ever like just restocking um restocking uh, keys doing tons of giants farming orbs and crests for units um one of my guild members um i think i think it was hectate um he he told me he told us on chat he was like i have um i think he said he has two adonis 
three Caesars, and two Elks. Or no, no. He has two Adonis, two Elk, and two Carlota, or something like that, just because he's not sure what the new meta is going to be. I was like, dang, bro, like, way to, way to stay prepared. I need to farm Orbs and Crest to make my uh, second Elky and Carlota. I already have a second Adonis, but need to make a second Elky and, and Carlota. So, all that being said, I hope to see you guys soon, as in tomorrow soon, to look at this update firsthand. We're going to go through all of it again. Um, not to make it sound boring, just to make it sound like exciting, guys. We're going to go through it all, show you guys exactly what everything means, clear up all the questions you guys may have. So, again, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. Developers, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Everybody that stayed with the game, stuck to it, trusted in our developers. Thank you guys so much for not quitting. And for everybody who did leave the game, um, we were sad to see you go. But if there was ever a time to join us back, now is the time. So please, please, um, I hope to see you guys in Arena or or in Guild Wars. And if you guys like my content, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Helps keep me motivated. Until the next time, guys, Neon out.